these short-term outlooks are giving us some hope that we're switching back to a new uh, precipitation and uh, temperature regime. Hello and welcome to this edition of The State of Soy. I'm Aaron Putzi and I'm visiting today with Justin Glisson. Justin is the climatologist for Iowa. First of all, I have to ask you, Justin, you've got a degree in both, but what is the difference between climatology and meteorology? Yes. Well, nice to be with you, Aaron. Meteorology is the, the elevator talk that we, we discuss or when we're at social functions and we don't have a lot to talk about. Weather is the day-to-day -day state of the atmosphere. Hours, think of tornadoes or severe weather, all the way out seven to 10 days, those transient low pressure systems that bring weather across the United States. So it's the variation in the atmosphere, temperature, precipitation, what we expect. Climatology is the average of weather for a given location over a longer period of time. So we consider 30 years as a climate decade. How much rain do we need to sustain drought conditions or to improve them? That's what climatology is. Speaking of drought, give us an update on what, where we're at from a drought monitoring standpoint. Of course, that's near and dear to the hearts of soybean farmers out there. Absolutely. So we look back to October of 2021, eighth wettest October on record, really helped stave off the expansion of the 2020 drought that initiated in June of 2020. We've had precipitation deficits, especially in northwestern Iowa, anywhere from 8 to 16 inches below average going back 16 months. So pervasive precipitation deficits. You get into hot and uh, dry days like this with wind, that can extract a lot of water vapor out of the soil. So we can see flash drought occur. That's drought that occurs over several weeks versus seasonal droughts that form over uh, months to years. So in terms of drought where we are, we have had improving conditions through spring with colder April, given uh, the delayed planting that we saw, also wetter conditions. Now in June, which is the wettest month of the year for the northern two-thirds of the state, we've been below average precipitation-wise. We've seen drought start to expand in northwestern Iowa and that D0 abnormally dry category expand in southeastern Iowa. So when we look at the short term, we have two products, the 6 to 10 and 8 to 14 day outlooks. They're actually showing a shift from these really warm and dry conditions back towards an elevated signal for cooler conditions, uh, but also chances of rainfall moving forward. Now, it's not going to be widespread rainfall, but it's going to be those timely rainfalls that our soybean farmers uh, rely on to hold the crop on as we do get into drier conditions. If we look at the seasonal outlooks, we do see a warm and dry signal. Those are elevated signals, they're not blocked in, but these are partly a function of the current La Nina phase that's hung around for the last three years. In years in which we've seen three years of La Nina, which are only a handful since 1950, we do see a dry signal forming in late June and July. Now there are a lot of factors that have to come into play for that to happen, uh, but these short-term outlooks are giving us some hope that we're switching back to a new uh, precipitation and uh, temperature regime. Well, farmers would be glad to hear that, but it sounds like it could be a just-in-time kind of rain event that we're seeing here as we move through the growing season. Lastly, what are some resources for farmers to, that you recommend for really monitoring weather and, and climate? You know, we talk about those daily uh, outlooks that go out 6 to 10 and 8 to 14 day. Don't look at each as a picture, look at each as a trend or what we're seeing as a shift. Those give us an idea of when we're going to get planted, what hybridizations we can use, but also the planting window that we might have. Also those seasonal outlooks, match those up with what we've seen recently in the trends to kind of give you better guidance in terms of the expectation uh, for rainfall events or temperature extremes moving into the harvest window. Weather is uncontrollable, but we have a lot of resources, as you mentioned, that can help our farmers and stakeholders have a better idea of what's happening. Well, as you know, Justin, few things are more important to farmers than the weather. They're gonna be watching those resources very closely as we move forward this growing season. Reporting for the Iowa Soybean Association in the state of soy, I'm Aaron Putzi. Farming is a competitive business and you need equipment you can count on every single day. That's why for nearly 90 years, farmers have entrusted their grain handling to Brandt Agricultural Products. Brandt's full line of hardworking conveyors, augers, grain carts, vacs, grain bagging equipment, and tillage equipment are made to deliver the competitive edge you need to lead the field and are manufactured here in the USA. For more information on our full line of products, visit Brandt.ca today.